Happy 4th everyone, it is MCN Mike here. Instead of celebrating our great nation of the United States of America, I decided to talk about Pokemon for X amount of minutes. Recently, there's been a lot of debate over the National Dex for Pokemon Sword and Shield. While I resign on the Who cares, I'm a slave to the corporate tactics of Game Freak side of the argument, I wanted to maybe shed some light on this situation and find out where this problem started. Perhaps then we can better understand why this controversy is happening now. That being said, let's start with the release dates. And uh, by the way, I will be focusing on the North American release dates instead of Japan because it seems like most of the people complaining are from the US and also because I'm also from the US. Let's briefly go through the timeline up to where the problem starts. Pokemon Gold and Silver came out on October 13th, 2000, two years after the original Red and Blue released. Pokemon Crystal followed suit in July of 2001. Generation 2 introduced 100 plus new Pokemon, day-night cycles, equipable items, yes I was surprised at this too, dark and steel type, and breeding. All of this in just under two years of development. The only negative response that was given about this generation was that the level curve was brutal, and a majority of the new Pokémon were extremely rare and locked away until post-game. In addition, a small complaint was that Evolution Stones weren't used too much despite being newly introduced. The only wild Pokémon that needed one to evolve was Growlithe at the time, if I'm not mistaken, with Eevee being an exception, of course. No other wild Pokemon until the Kanto portion needed evolutionary stones, so they just took up space in your bag. Otherwise, it was met with tons of praise. Ruby and Sapphire released in March of 2003, with Emerald following the month after. This generation introduced 135 new Pokemon. Natures that affect stats, double battles, abilities, Pokemon contests that two people actually liked unironically, and secret bases as a one-time feature as it was never introduced in future generations aside from the Gen 3 remakes. Already here we can see the problem. This generation was famously criticized for too much water, as well as abandoning the day and night cycles because of internal battery save problems, and it only allowed the player to collect 202 out of the now 386 species of Pokemon. Not only that, but you couldn't trade Pokemon from generations 1 and 2 into the generation 3 games because of hardware limitations. Removing features because of hardware limitations? Limiting the number of Pokemon in the game? Does that sound familiar to you? Maybe it was a one-time thing. Let's go to Generation 4. Diamond and Pearl released in April of 2007, and Platinum released two years later in March of 2009. This generation gave us 107 new species of Pokemon, a mixture of 3D graphics and sprites, a move classification system, which is what shows physical and special attacks, online multiplayer trading and battling, F in the chat for Nintendo Wi-Fi connection, return of the day and night cycles, and the underground, which was where secret bases made a brief return. Aside from the game being way too slow, Generation 4 had some, albeit fewer, complications compared to the previous generations. The story essentially felt like Generation 3's with a new coat of paint and too many obstacles required HMs, basically requiring you to have one or two HM slaves which took up spots in your party. Generation 5 gave us Black and White, and even direct sequels in the form of Black 2 and White 2, which was a first for the Pokemon series. Black and White were released in March of 2011 with no definitive or third version to follow, which is already a red flag to some fans. Generation 5 gave us 156 new Pokemon, the sea gear for Wi-Fi options, triple battles, rotation battles, Pokemon musicals which were also played unironically by about two people, and TMs finally weren't single use. The criticism with this one is interesting to me. The regional decks for the first time in the series, as of the release of Black and White, was only new Pokemon. No Pokemon from generations 1 through 4 were found in these games. Beyond that, the story was very linear, the gym leaders maxed out at 3 Pokemon, and the Elite 4 only had 4 Pokemon, as opposed to the typical 5 or 6. What people hated the most out of all these is the focus on story, which was a massive departure for the series at the time. 
Again, we see the pattern of no national Pokedex. Generation 6 is believed by some, including myself, to be the beginning of the downfall of Pokemon. Pokemon X and Y were released on October 12, 2013 worldwide. This generation gave us a laughable 72 new Pokemon, Fairy type, Mega Evolution, Trainer Customization, Super Training which almost nobody used, Sky Battles, Horde Encounters, Inverse Battle, and proper functionality of Benches. These were also the first Pokemon games to be in full 3D, which left many fans in positive awe. Oh boy, there are plenty of complaints to be had with this one. What people didn't like about this generation is the story felt shallow, gym leaders in the Elite Four felt forgettable and only had three to four Pokemon just like black and white, and rivals felt more like your friends as opposed to, well, rivals. Overall, this game was just too easy, and that's one of the biggest problems people had with it. Honestly, while this generation introduced a lot, it had many of the same problems that started with Generation 5, which is a shame given that expectations were high due to this being a fully 3D Pokemon game. Generation 7 saw the release of Pokemon Sun and Moon on November 18th, 2016. The generation introduced, again, a laughable amount of new Pokemon, this time clocking in at 88. New features consisted of Alolan forms of Kanto Pokemon, Island Trials replacing Gyms, Z-Moves, Pokepelago, and the Festival Plaza for all your Wi-Fi shenanigans. Just like Generation 5, these games also got direct sequels a year later with Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, which introduced... The two things on the box art. Needless to say, many fans did not like the complete overhaul of the gameplay, changing the traditional 8 gyms to the Island Trials. We even got a Dark-type Island Kahuna in the form of Nanu, and yet after 20 plus years we still don't have a Dark-type gym. Aside from that, these games were very cutscene heavy, and just like Generation 6, your rival was more of a friend than some kind of frenemy or actual enemy. Not to mention that the game holds your hand a lot of the time, making the start of the game super slow. Then we come to today, with Sword and Shield five months away from release, and people are quite literally hating on Game Freak. Every post from Pokemon or Junichi Masuda is littered with replies saying, hashtag bring back national decks. It's even gotten to the point of harassment with people saying, hashtag fire Masuda and hashtag hire Morimoto. Essentially, it's a war between the Dexits and the people with half a brain. So why did I spend so long going over the history of Pokemon's releases and criticisms that follow? Well, you may notice that I point out a detail that appeared a few times in the timeline that are being brought back with this recent controversy. That being the lack of a national Dex in Generations 3 and 5. It bothered people when those respective games came out. However, why is it that now Game Freak is getting harassed? Now, I'm not saying they should have been ridiculed then, what I'm saying is they shouldn't be ridiculed for their actions now, as the industry is vastly different from 2003, hell, even different from 2012. This video's gone for long enough though. Join me tomorrow where I go into detail of what is causing these issues in the first place and why. Hopefully this two-part series can give you an idea of what's happening, since this can be hard to follow at times. See you guys in part two.